Well, I'm a little nervous to ask this question, but do you have any, this section is called pro tips. Pro tips. Do you have any advice for somebody who's maybe either trying to buy their first laundromat or maybe they have a laundromat and they're trying to start a pickup and delivery business? Do you have any advice for either one of those camps? Um, okay. Let, let's try, I'm going to try and tackle both. I'm, go, I'm going, I love it. I'm going for goal here. I love it. So buying a laundromat, I haven't brought a laundromat. So full disclosure here. Um, but I have looked at quite a few um, laundromats because um, I'm on the distribution list for business brokers in my local area. So if you're, anybody's familiar with New York, we have what's called the five boroughs, but inside the boroughs are different counties. Like it's totally crazy here. So there's certain um, counties and boroughs that I always look at um, and they send me all the alerts. So it's always very interesting look at and at the financials of um, dry cleaners and laundries. Uh, laundry mats, as well as uh, laundry delivery, pickup and deliveries um, that are for sale. So, and it's kind of basic, probably what I'm going to say, and it's probably been said a million times, but when it comes to a laundromat, what always interests me is the utilities. A hundred percent. Like people, they tell me like, oh, I have this mix of machines. or I did like, I'm like, cool. I just want to see your utilities, bro. And it, and the bills People, or what? The, yeah, the gas, okay. electric, water, sewer, um, trash. Like, I want to see all your bills. And I'm sure there are plenty of owners out there or people in the industry. If you, if I look at your bills, I don't care how much money you tell me. Like, I've had people tell me, oh, the store does this amount. And I looked at their utilities and I was like, oh, hell no. There's no way that they're making that money. And their utilities are this low. I was like, unless they like they, they they've got some kind of um, water treatment plant and they're yeah. recycling water or something. Well. Like, I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They got a well. I'm like, no way your water bill is this low. And like they're in New York City, everybody's tied into the main and they, we've got meters now. It's no more frontage. And they're getting us because we pay twice. So we pay for the water coming in mm. and we pay going out and yep. sewage in New York is twice as much as the water coming in. Mm-hmm. And I've even argued the fact where sewage, our sewage bill is inaccurate. And they were like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I was like, let's be absolutely clear. When I wash the clothes, there is still water in the clothes when we put them in the dryer. So truly the amount of water that comes in is not the exact amount of water that I'm flushing down the sewer drain because a lot of what, not a lot, but a good portion of water gets evaporated with the clothes in the dryer. I was like, mm-hmm. can I get a discount for that? They were like, oh, no, no, like they didn't want to entertain that. But I, I would always want to look at the finances. The I'm sorry, the utilities of the business that you're interested in in buying. Um, the utilities will tell you a lot. And then you might say, well, Wally, it's my first laundromat. So I, I don't have I don't know what the barometer is for a water bill or for a gas bill, electric bill based on the number of machines they have. hundred percent. And I'm not even going to sit here and tell you, like, go to the manufacturer and find out how many watts or how many gallons of water the washer uses and figure because it's different cycles and all that. I'm not even going to pretend and come up with some spreadsheet. What I would say is I got one, by the way, feel free to go to laundromat resource and download it if you want it. Oh, I'm going. Um, <laughs> you know what? Somebody I, I somebody had one and like they wouldn't share it with me. It was a distributor. What? Um, I got one. It's not, free. Not for the store, but for doing laundry. Like when I first started doing drop off and pick up and delivery, like I so I tell you in my head, I'm like super detailed and itemized. But in life, I'm like, give me a napkin. Let's go. Right. <laughs> I was like, I need a spreadsheet so I can get to the penny how much it costs for me to do this drop off. And this one gentleman had it and he's like, I can't share it to you because it, w- it wouldn't be fair to my customers. And I'm like, dude, you're in like Colorado. Like I ain't coming here to open a store, do delivery yet um that's right yet I but like that. that would be super that would be super interesting for me um but yeah i i would say if you get to utilities find someone else in the industry who's has a store of comparable size or even could be bigger and ask if you know if you could or like i don't know hook up with jordan in in, in the mentoring program through the laundromat resource and say listen what's what do you see as your members stores utilities and this is what I see for this store. How much mm-hmm. revenue are they doing? And this store owner told me they're doing this much revenue. Does this kind of make sense? Just comparing apples to apples. 
um, I'm a big fan of looking at the utilities and it's just from over time. Like I even had it with my dad. My dad was like, oh yeah. When I took over the store, he's like, oh yeah, we're doing this much revenue a week. And I was just like, really? This might be super attractive now. <laughs> and then I opened the store and I was like, I don't see these numbers, dad. <laughs> he's like, well, cause you're not doing it right. And you're doing this wrong. And then, but I looked at his utilities and looked at my utilities and I'm like, they're about the same. So like, you know, that tells you a, a, a whole story. Um, the other thing I would say is you mentioned about growing a, well, getting started in the delivery business for the first year. The, I think one of the biggest expenses with or challenges is drivers and then the expense of having a vehicle and the insurance, et cetera, et cetera. The first year I did pick up and deliveries myself. So I, I started the route six in the morning or seven o'clock, whatever it was back then. I would do it for, I think, four or five hours. I think I did four hours. And then I would finish, drop everything back off at the store, go to the office, do other work for our other business, and then get back in the car. And our business is in the Bronx, our office is in the Bronx. So then I drive 17 miles to the Bronx, finish there, rush back to Brooklyn for the, for the evening deliveries, load up the car. Sometimes Jess would be in the car with me because I didn't have time to drop off or she would like, just keep going. We'll go to the store and do deliveries. We do deliveries for another four hours and then I'd be done. I, first of all, I saved hella money by doing it myself in the beginning, but forget the money. You know how much I learned about delivery and the customer service and how much time, like, even if you have a team, I would encourage anybody who's doing delivery and want to start, go do some deliveries yourself. My drivers can't tell me smack about doing deliveries. Oh, well, lead like it was traffic. And that's why I can only do three, four orders in an hour because we have our pickup and delivery windows. I'm like BS. I would do eight orders in an hour in New York City. Traffic, parking, apartment. And we got walk up apartment buildings in here. There's no elevators. There's no fancy <laughs> buildings. <right? laughs> there's some new ones now in my neighborhood, but not be you, you. They buzz you in. You run up four or five flights of stairs to get to the top floor with two heavy bags of laundry. And I, I would get, you know, seven, eight done in an hour, Hust, like hustling. And I was driving a mini Cooper. So laundry was packed in this thing with the seats folded down and I'm running. And before that, I had a little Ford Escape and I packed everything in it and I ran around. So I would say, and this is contradictory. And the, the more we talk, you know, like Wally, there's a huge contradiction, but it, it goes against what we talked about before about being self-employed and having a system. You should be involved in this business that you're building in this system. So you understand the components. I'm not saying you have to be an expert in every piece of it, but when your team members are talking to you about stuff, you can relate to it and you can understand some of the components of it. And then you don't have to worry about team members pulling the wool over your eye. You're like, no way. I know what it, how long it takes to get three bags to a four story walk up or I delivered like my drivers have mentioned. Yeah, I went to so and so's house and I'll be like, oh, yeah, she's a two. Like, yeah, when she comes to the door, she will talk to you a whole lot about her muffins and all this. <laughs> and, and then they look at me and like, wow, like he, he just doesn't tell me what to do. He, he's actually done it. Like you become a leader. Like that's what a leader is, not someone who just bosses people around. It, it makes a big difference. It does. And, uh, yeah. And I was just going to say, like, I don't think that that is a contradiction because it's called building a business and you can't right. just have a business out of nowhere. Right. Some people, maybe they have a lot of extra capital and they can just throw the capital into building the business so they don't have God to run. It. And some people, you know, have to build the business on their own back and you do have to trade that time for a while. But it's always with the goal. If you're trying to build a business, then it's with the goal of scaling up big enough to where you can bring other people on to work in the business so you can work on the business. Like, right. you, were and he, it, like you said, even if you have the capital, like think of how much less capital you can burn through mm -hmm. and allocate it to something else if you're doing some part of it where it's not a detriment to you building the business. But, and then you get to get that no firsthand knowledge of it too. At the same time, like now you get to take this capital and put it somewhere else or, or exponentially grow what you're doing because now you, you, you avoid the pitfall of paying someone to do it. And you're like, ah, they kind of got me on that. When I done it, I know what to look for. So now I can pump even more money into that to grow it even faster. Um, so utilities, I'm definitely going to say that uh, for, for the first part, mm -hmm. the, the, the delivery part, get involved yourself in the beginning, save yourself some money, but totally to educate yourself on it. 
Um, so then you could really build out the service and advertise it well because you know the nuances of it. And then you can highlight like our drivers are this, like oh, our drivers always wear a mask, you know, because of the COVID age now. Or our drivers will like our drivers carry it up to their apartment. I like, <laughs> yeah. I can give you stories about 150 pounds of laundry. I carried up to a six floor walk up and I almost fell down the stairs <laughs> and got to the top floor of the building and it was totally winded and out of breath. But when she opened it, I was like, hello, how are you? And then when she went back inside, I was like, <laughs> I have a heart attack here. Like, you know, it, it's a, you, you get to understand those different things. And two, it puts you in a better place because then you're like, oh, you know what? We should order these type of laundry bags versus these because it's easier for the driver and it's easier for the customer. Mm-hmm. Like you, you have a totally different aspect on it. Um, the other pro tip I would give in, in those two categories would be the finances. If you're going to, you're, you're looking at buying a business and everybody says, yeah, you get the finance and you look at them. True. But in laundry mats, I think it's, it's a little different in other, in sm- other small business categories also. And one thing I would say about the finances, and I've heard some horror stories, um, and I wouldn't say horror stories, but some good learning lessons from people who brought laundromats and they looked at the finances. And, and I see it all the time when a business broker see it to me too. And I'm like, they're like cash flow. And I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't count all the real expenses when they say cash flow a lot of times. And what factors I think gets overlooked is, and you mentioned it earlier, the mom and pop shop mm-hmm. where the owner is, is not the operator, they're the worker. Mm-hmm. They're, they're sitting in the store 10 hours a day, whatever, 12 hours a day. They're doing some of the drop-offs or they got a family member in there doing it. And I see that a lot um, in my community. And I, and I get it. Like they're local um, stores and they have family members in there. And I'm, I know they're not paying them whatever minimum wages, like whatever agreement they have with them. Like I respect that totally. But you can't, factor that into the finances. So when you look at those numbers, the numbers are way more attractive because they're kind of running an unattended store from a financial aspect versus a fully attended store where you've got someone on your payroll, whatever hours that store is open, they're, they're a W-2 and you're, you're paying payroll taxes and all that good stuff that comes along with it for the government. Mm-hmm. Um, and most some places might not dis- disclose that to you in their finances. Or even if you ask them, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm not there all the time. Like the attendant is here and they might have a part time attendant, but the, the finances don't really reflect that. I highly encourage anyone buying a store to sit in the store and don't tell the owner you're coming. Choose some random days on the weekends. The You know, when they tell you these are our busiest days, these are our slow days when you're d- negotiating or you're getting introduced to the, the potential um, laundry mat to buy, go sit in the store for those days and don't, don't loiter, go do laundry there. So if they see you, they're like, or send one of your relatives that they haven't met or they don't know and have them go in there. I would see my brother to stores all the time. Like we had this spreadsheet. He would love going through the neighborhood and he would do laundry and he would, oh, they got four types of machines. They at these prices, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And he, he would, he, he, they have these type of signs in there. He's like, I think these signs are awesome. Like we could, we could get some, some data from that and, and incorporate a different way to educate customers in the store. We would do that a lot, but I, I would highly encourage sit in a store and watch it. How many people come in, which machines are they using frequently, especially if it's a, a it's an older store where they're not using a lot of technology, especially coin stores. You 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 got to get that information firsthand, and a lot, and unfortunately, a lot of people not. Let me not say a lot, but I'm willing to bet it is they don't have good record keeping. Listen, when I was running quarters, I was just trying to keep the lights on. I'm just like dump the machines, get the quarters back into the into the the change dispenser, and get people coming through the door. Like our books were okay, they're way better now because we we have better systems. We use technology a lot better, um, to track everything. But in the beginning, like you know, it was just it was coins in the machine, and let's dump them out. Um, but yeah, just investigate the finances, not just what's on paper, but what's physically going on in the store. That, that would be the other pro tip. Love that. Love that. I think that's really good advice. And I think it's good. Uh, you know, I think there's, it's really easy to make mistakes when you're buying Mm -hmm. your first laundromat. And so gathering that data and, you know, I tell people all the time, Hey, like go to, go to laundromat resource and download the 
there's a sample pro forma sheet. It's free. You can download it. And what that'll give you is line items of the most common yep. expenses of a laundromat. And just make sure every line item is accounted for because you know it's easy for an owner to forget a line uh, item, yeah. right? Like <laughs> a sewer bill or whatever, right? So you just never know. You want to make sure it's accounted for. Awesome, awesome. Pro tips 